Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to be looking at the constant multiple rule for derivatives. Okay, here I'm using a GeoGebra applet uh, or activity that I've put together. And in this one, you can, uh, you can graph a function, f of x, write something in here. And here I'm using just sine of x. And then you can also graph c times that. So g of x or is... Uh, or we'll just call it C, C f of x, is C times f of x. And so the way you do this is you take every uh, thing here. For example, I've got, um, I can control C by this slider or this uh, input here. I can change the formula for f of x, and I can change the value of a. So right now I've got a value of a, let's say, uh, you know, something in here. There we go, say 5.5. And... If you look at this, you can see the original function. And so the original function here, this goes from a to f of a. It goes down that distance. So what happens when you do three times that on the outside, you're just stretching that vector so that it's three times as long, c times as long. And that will give you the, the, the function here. So if you notice, we can see, uh, so there here c is... Um, If c is 1, it's the same function, right? And as we let c be bigger than 1, we're stretching this thing further away from the x-axis. So the points that are farther away from the x-axis move even farther away, and the ones that are on the x-axis don't move at all. The ones that are further down move, move further down. So um, they just move further away from the x-axis, unless they're on the x-axis, so then they don't move. And they move by a factor of well, whatever c is. So, for example, let's uh, let's let's make c three, for example. So it's three times as much. Now the question is, what's that going to do to the derivatives? Okay. So let me uh, show you here. For example, uh, now there might be some rounding off here, but here I have f of a is negative 0.71 and c times f of a is negative uh, 2.12 okay a slight bit of rounding off on that one because these are these are rounded off values but can you see that this that the the value here is three times the value there like i said just slightly off because of some rounding Okay, but you should see that that's three times as much. And if I change the value C, you should see that. Well, look at the derivatives. Here they are, and here are the tangent lines. So you're looking at the slopes of these tangent lines for the derivative. Well, here are the values right here. Can you see a, 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 a relationship there? Well, you may see that you get uh, essentially the same relationship, right? That even no matter where I put these, the uh, the value here is three times that one there. It's exactly three. The rounding off may not get it exactly here. Now, if we look at it over here in the picture, what that's saying is the slopes are uh, one is three times the other one. So, for example, here, the slope can be seen as the amount we go up when we go to the right one, how much we go up on the tangent line. So this little distance right here is the uh, the slope, which is about 0.28. That's the, this, this distance of this little vector right here. Well, if you multiply that by 3, you get approximately 0.85, and that's the distance right here, which is how much this tangent line goes up. And again, uh, it, it works at the difference quotient level, too. I don't have this done in the difference quotient level, but you can see that that it's just, uh, we're, we're, since we're, we're stretching everything that's vertical, but not stretching anything that's horizontal, the delta x is staying the same, but the delta y here is three times what it is here. That would be true on the, at the uh, difference quotient level and also at the, at the uh, uh, derivative level whether we're looking at slopes of secant lines or slopes of tangent lines. So it turns out that 
we get this nice little rule that the derivative of c times f of x is c times the derivative of f. Derivative of c times f of x is c times f prime of x. And we can see that also at the level of the derivative functions. Now to see this, it's going to get a little messy if I put all of this on here. So let me take away this here. And we see the derivatives here of the, this one is the derivative of the original function. That's f prime, and this is cf prime, the derivative of the other one. And once again, we see that this vector here is going to be three times as long as that, no matter where we, no matter where we place a. So things are stretched further away from the x-axis. Uh, how much? Well, three times as much. We can actually see the formal proof written out right here. The derivative of c times f of x is the limit as x goes to zero, as h goes to zero, of cf uh, of x plus h minus cf of x. Well, cf of x is c times f of x, and cf of h is c times f of x plus h. So we take this and factor out a c. That's using the distributive property. Then we can use one of our limit rules that says we can pull this c out front where it becomes a coefficient as long as it's a constant multiple in here provided this limit exists and this limit does exist because that's just f prime. So if, if the function has a derivative then c times that function will have a derivative which is just c times the original one. And so that is the constant multiple rule. And there you can see the proof written out a little bit bigger. Now here's a contextual example of this. Joan is a sales manager for a sales team. She earns 5% of the revenue from the sales of the members of her team. Now Frank is on her team. Frank's sales have been increasing at a rate of $5,000 per year. How do Frank's sales affect the increase or decrease in Joan's income? I'll give you a second to figure that out and come back. Pause if you need to. Okay, well you're back. Hopefully you work this out. Joan's income, we'll call that J, is based on Frank's sales, F, given by J of T is 0 0.05 F of T, where T is time. Uh, that's the part of Joan's income that's based on Frank's sales. Oh, uh, presumably she gets 5% of some other folks and maybe a salary on top of that. By the constant multiple rule, J prime of T is 0 0.05 F prime of T. F prime of T is 5,000 per year. So if you multiply that together, you get $250 per year, and that's going to be F prime of T, which is the increase in Jones' income. So due to Frank's increase in sales, Jones' income is increasing by $250 per year. Now let's put that to work in computing a few derivative formulas. So for example, the derivative of 3x squared is 3 times the derivative of x squared. The derivative of x squared is 2x. 3 times 2x is 6x. Now, of course, we could just do this whole thing in our head. You just take the 2 times the 3 is 6, and the power goes down 1 to the x. See if you can do this next one on your own. What's the derivative of 5x cubed? Well, hopefully you already got that. It is 15x squared. Now, we can actually combine the multiple, constant multiple rule and the power rule together to be able to find derivatives of a constant times a power function like this. The derivative of c times x to the n is c times the derivative of x to the n, which is n x to the n minus 1. So this is just n times c or c times n x to the n minus 1. So you could do that directly, for example, see if you can apply that directly here. So for this first one, did you get 15x squared, and for the second one, did you get 40x to the fourth? So this is a nice little simple rule that helps us out in uh, computing some, uh, some derivatives. If you have a constant factor, really it doesn't affect much of anything in terms of actually computing it. You just bring it out front, do your computation, and then just multiply that factor at the end. And so uh, that gives us a nice way to uh, simplify some derivatives. We'll put that to work with some other stuff uh, further as we continue on. See you next time.